Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoilery discussion for Lightbringer by Claire Legrand and the entire Imperium trilogy. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you have not read this series, go and check out my spoiler-free review for this book, which is linked on the screen. So this series, like I said, took me a little bit longer to read. When I get out of this series, I don't feel as compelled to get back into it, but I really do enjoy what this series explores as a whole, particularly around Riel and her descent into villainy and villain main character dynamics and just like morally grayness in general. I think the series and Claire Legrand does that really well. I do think this book was really slow. There was a ton of meandering around with like the Eliana stuff, the Ludovine stuff, and Audric. Like I just found myself not really caring about a lot of Audric's plotline. Honestly, like I get all the political machinations and things that he had to do, but I just, I, I didn't really care. A lot of the side characters kind of fell um, by the wayside for me, didn't really care about them so much. And I knew that I, I wanted to care and I just didn't. Eliana's continued torture over months and months and months got like so tedious to me like I get it but I'm also like did she need to be as broken as she was but to like actually end up like getting through to mom because like, again like you're sort of thinking that they're gonna train her to either like kill mom you know kill Riel or Corian and Riel's the one that ends up like doing it in the end and I know Eliana being there sort of like influenced it and you know they kind of showed like Audra couldn't have done it like it had to be her um but I, I feel like getting her to this breaking point that she was at doesn't really make sense but at the same time it's like all that's undone right um so this whole ending of this book is more so what i talk about than anything else um because we have the reveal that ludivine was the prophet which i started to figure out like mostly in this book for a while there i thought that zara was ludivine um and then when we started to be like okay she's the prophet like that made sense but that was like man what a long game <laughs> right like that that's a that's a long time to be doing this but good for you sitting there right underneath him for a long long time wow um but the the torture and even like the simon betrayal like it's showing that like it, them going back in time changed things but not really and did, did, did we figure out that it's not really what i gathered was like not really like he was always ludivine's sort of like monster um, who she then turned over to Corian so that she could have a spy in there. Like, a lot of that just seemed really unnecessary, but again, it gets all undone in the end. Um, so I think that very ending, like I mentioned in my review, I do feel like overall this this book was much more about Riel and like even Eliana's story re revolved around Riel, like needing to go back and like convince Riel and we're seeing Riel like go farther and farther into villainy, having these moments where you're like, well, maybe she's going to kind of snap out of it and then she does it and you're like pulling for it and you're like, uh, and she kills Tal and she kills, like she does so many irredeemable things. So you're kind of like, how is this going to be resolved? Um, and then we have that final battle and her destroying him, which was like very very satisfying because you see how much he's been like manipulating her but he really does feel like he loves her which I just find that dynamic like so interesting um but so I appreciate that it was her that did all of it but then we have this like okay now she sort of gets to live a normal life but not really um and I liked how that was done where it's like she's not redeemed not really like she gets a little bit of happiness mostly for Audric um, but then she slowly just starts kind of just turning into like the Imperium, like just turns into magic basically. Um, like she's never going to be truly happy like here, like she has to go. That, that resolution of Riel specifically felt good. Um, the Eliana stuff and like all of that timeline being erased, I don't know how that could have been done better honestly. Um, I guess it sort of had to be, but at the same time it's kind of like you almost wish that you could see that this was to, because you're kind of showing like uh, parallel universes, right? So that parallel universe still exists. So you almost want to see like past Eliana going back to that sort of, but I don't, again, I don't really know how that could have been done necessarily because then she would have gone back to where uh, like a past in which she didn't succeed. So I guess that wouldn't have worked. But like, you almost want to see like that stuff, um, but you can't. And then we have this like, I don't like how we wrapped up the Eliana and Simon stuff of like, now they know each other, she's a kid, there's this implied affection, but there's a big age gap. This is where the age gap gets like so problematic. Like it very much feels like a gross, like Jacob and Renesmee, like this thing of like, they're gonna be together later. And it's like, yeah, but he's like so much older than her now. Like he's a teenager and she's like a, a child. And he can have, like, affection for her, but, like, not like that. So just knowing that, like, it's going to sort of, they're teasing it going in that direction for everyone that shipped it when they were older. And I still feel like it was kind of inappropriate when they were older, too. Like, why make him seven years older? Like, why don't you make him, like, three or four years older? 
you know, well, I guess he couldn't have, because then he would have been three. Um, I just, the, the age gap, I don't like it. Um, so yeah, that ending, I can't tell you what I would have done to fix it, but I just know I didn't like it completely as far as like how they handled like the Eliana Simon stuff, but how they handled the Riel stuff, I think was like, you couldn't really do that any other way. And that was really satisfying. Like I found like her being like redeemed, but sort of, and like never truly being able to redeem herself because she did so many bad things. Like all of that felt good. Um, I liked that. So yeah, ultimately, like I said, I enjoyed the exploration of the tropes in this um, and really kind of going there with the villainy stuff because I feel like a lot of books shy away from that. Um, but had some weaker points too, but I'm really interested to see like what Claire Legrand continues to do. She continues to be one of the authors that I want to continue to read from. Like I enjoy all the stuff that she's written um, and I just think she keeps getting better. So and I think she's doing an adult series next, I want to say. Um, so I'm excited for all that. But yeah, comment below. Let me know what you thought of the wrap up for the Imperium trilogy. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.